Nigeria is gearing up for presidential elections next year. Just last week, the main opposition party picked its candidate, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. And the ruling APC party will make its choice at a convention next week. Whoever secedes uh, the current president, Muhammadu Buhari, will face a wide range of national emergencies. Here's what's at stake in Nigeria. The country is dealing with mounting insecurity from the Boko Haram insurgency in the Northeast to kidnappings for ransom, plaguing the Northwest. Endemic corruption also poses a threat to the government's stability. The next president will also have to navigate Africa's biggest economy through very, very uncertain times with, for example, high inflation, slow growth, and a shrinking labor market as well. All right, time now for the exchange and a deeper look at uh, Nigeria's economic development. Earlier, I spoke with Tony Alumelu, one of the country's most famous businessmen and philanthropists. I asked him what it will take to help the continent prosper Africa as a whole and the international community's role in that. So the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, did a virtual visit of Nigeria just last year where he talked about the importance of trade, um, you know, good governance, economic development. Does the U.S. have a role in creating a much more economically empowered Africa? And if so, what do you think that role should be? Well, good to meet you, Zen. Yes, I think that the uh, United States has a key role to play in uh, helping to catalyze economic development and prosperity in Nigeria and in Africa. Uh, the tie between Nigeria, Africa, and the U.S. is very strong. Every kid grows up in Nigeria and Africa wanting, aspiring to be, to be like an American, a mm -hmm. strong cultural mm -hmm. influence here. And I believe that our political leadership defer a lot to also America. And it would be nice for America to realize its role in, the, in its role and influence in Africa. And that can be governed more positively in helping to catalyze development. Yeah, so the government has a key role, as you point out, in creating an enabling environment. But when you think about right now the ease of doing business in Nigeria, I mean, it's still quite problematic from inflation to the energy crisis to unemployment. I mean, there are all sorts of headwinds for young entrepreneurs. What do you think the role of the private sector is in creating a much more business-friendly environment for dynamic and creative young entrepreneurs to thrive? I speak from experience. At the Tony Elmelu Foundation, which my family founded in 2010, we helped to catalyze and encourage young African, young Nigerians to go into entrepreneurship, to embrace entrepreneurship as a way of helping themselves, their communities, and their, the country. And one of the areas I believe the private sector must uh, play a role, and government in fact also, will be to help to catalyze luck, to help to democratize luck, to help share part of their prosperity with these young upcoming Africans and Nigerians so that all of us collectively can do more in helping to eradicate poverty, in helping to drive youth employment, in helping to catalyze employment in a manner and scale that one single corporate cannot do. Nigeria has a general election in about nine or so months from now. Um, what do you think the country needs from new leadership in order to unleash the country's full economic potential? We need to deal with insecurity in the country. There's so much private capital looking for the right investment destination in the world. That capital will not come to Nigeria if we do not fix insecurity in the country. We need to make sure that we have improved on infrastructure. Crude oil production has gone down because of theft in the Niger Delta area. We need to fix it. There's so much happening in the world in terms of oil price has gone up. Well, my country is not benefiting from this because of yeah, but when you of when you say tony oil. that we need to fix the issue when it comes to crude oil theft i mean you've spoken about this a lot you've been very very adamant about that what specifically should the government be doing now so it's a major issue and i believe that uh, the government should continue to emphasize this uh, so that uh, we can the, the oil is a common wealth in the country, and how can a few people be stealing this commonwealth of the country, plundering it? It's not good. 
And I believe this must be keeping government up at night. So we need to engage our security agency to do what they should do to help protect the integrity and territory of the country by making sure that things like this don't happen. God, they light. It's um, totally, totally unacceptable. Um, as you know, climate change is a huge problem for Africa because Africa contributed the least to climate change, but it's set to bear the brunt of it. Um, you've invested heavily in Nigeria's energy sector. How long before renewable sources of energy become a major player in Nigeria's power sector? You know, Zen, the truth is uh, we shouldn't. <laughs> we are suffering so much. Access to electricity, as I said, in Nigeria is extremely poor. Carbon emission in this part of the world, totally less than 2%. So we, 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 we are not even at the point where we should be talking of this. However, it's important as members of the global community that it, the, the, the climate change effect is real. But we think that. Um, there should be a different kind of conversation that should allow developing countries, especially Nigeria, other African countries, to come up a bit. So there should be a deal to encourage, support countries. Because if we don't be renewable to a large extent, it's limited in terms of capability or capacity to support the energy consumption that we need in this part of the world, to even, even come to the basic level that others others have experienced in other parts of the world. Tony, I think the issue is is that because the climate crisis is an emergency right now, a lot of the coastal communities across Africa are going to suffer. They're already suffering, actually, but they're going to suffer even more. They're going to pay a very, very high price because of climate change. We're talking about villages being destroyed, livelihoods and lives being lost um, at an ever-increasing rapid rate. So. Um, given what you're saying, what sort of assistance can the international community provide to Africa, to Nigeria especially, since you're obviously from Nigeria, to make sure that you can meet the climate crisis as fully equipped and as prepared as you can possibly be? You know, Zen, we are suffering the impact of this climate crisis. We're receiving much more than we're contributing or have contributed to it. And that, to me, is a major conversation that should be held. In the area of uh, energy financing, we need a deal that supports African institutions and African economies to, to come up, to, to address this issue. We need to see support in the area of, again, as I said, access to this is so critical to Africa, and funding, cutting funding in the energy area to Africa now it's like stifling the entire continent to Nigeria. So we need to see in Nigeria a deal that prioritizes and encourages and supports energy funding. Tony Elamelu, thank you so much. Thank you, Zen.